You know the rest. What's up, everybody? Strebo from MVP. Back to fill your stockings full of Christmas joy. And the one and only Logan decided to join us to say hello to MVP and everyone out there in Mutantville land. <laughs> figured since it's the holiday season that what better time than now to do a special unboxing for you and what better unboxing is there than the one the only Fango Fango that's right let's do another Fangoria unboxing this will be Fango unboxing I V V V the number four I did my first Fangoria video, uh, I guess a little over a year ago. I have to go back and look at the, the date to be specific. But uh, Fangoria's always had a cool, a special place in my heart for some reason. When I was a kid, um, I would always see them on the shelves at the bookstores, you know, specifically Walden's books or what have you. And um, I could never, my, of course, my mom would never buy one for me and uh, never let me read them. Um, I couldn't even watch horror films, but I could stay there in the store and actually thumb through the magazines. And I, I used to spend many an hour just flipping through the magazines of uh, the pages of Fangoria in the bookstore and just looking at the pictures and reading articles and uh, creating these crazy uh, images and, and stories in my mind from the whole thing. And I remember thinking, being really freaked out by it, and kind of entranced at the same time thinking gosh is this stuff real i mean it looks so real like look at this awesome cover this poltergeist cover look at those corpses i mean that's pretty gruesome yeah that's probably not the best lighting for that picture that's because the zombies themselves are kind of dark but anyway you get the idea it just looks so lifelike that i really believed in those things so it wasn't until i got much older that i was able to you know, and out on my own, obviously, and became an adult, and I was able to buy Fangoria if I wanted to. Um, but when they had that big fire in 2007 that destroyed all the back issues, I've, I figured, uh, what better time than now to start scooping up back issues since I've been wanting to get into that hobby. So, let's get started. See, I have here in my hands my box of Fangorias. Though, unfortunately, it's not exactly a box. It's more an envelope. Um, I've only opened the contents to make sure that I can access it for this video. I actually have not looked at the magazines. I'm not entirely 100% certain which issues I'm getting. Um, the uh, eBay listing had them uh, listed by number but didn't have a picture of all the covers. They were just kind of in a pile. So, you know, I saw little bits and pieces here and there. So, this will be my first time actually seeing what I wound up with. So, let's get going. Boom. Okay, this is the one I could see in the picture itself for the listing Clive Barker's Lords of Illusion there's this cover I already have this actually I think I, I unbox it in Fangoria unboxing 2 um, you can tell everything I love about Clive Barker's work is, is evident right here in this image I mean the character itself is so distinctive has such a new and unique look this is from 95 so even now it's still you look at it and go what the heck is that and when you know the story of Nyx and everything else behind it that happens in Lord of Illusions you'll uh, realize how imaginative that whole little universe was so this actually becomes an extra issue and we know what happens with extra issues is that I usually wind up giving them away speaking of giveaways I have not done my, my Q&A session and I realized that and I meant to do it for the longest time. I just got caught up in other stuff. I think specifically when I was getting ready to shoot it, um, I got sucked into the whole respawner process and I wound up having to assistant direct on that and doing uh, script and story supervisor and uh, got stuck in that whole process. And then whoosh, beyond that, we've been doing post on Ghost and then pre-production on Tales from Mutantville and post-production on Scarecrow at Midnight. So yeah, and I'm back editing Ghost and not editing anymore actually I finished the editing months ago but we're doing the uh, digital effects and the score so I've been very busy sorry about that 
I'm going to try to do that uh, Q&A session and give away my extra Fangorias before I give them all away, so to speak. Because I've been giving several of these away. When I go to the Retro Phantasma shows at the Carolina Theater, I usually, if I have a Fangoria issue that uh, parallels whatever they're showing that night. Like, I think I gave away a, a issue of, about um, Halloween 5, I think. Not a great Halloween, but, you know, when, when they were showing uh, Halloween 3 one night, so... That's a closely, it's not an exact, you know, link because of uh, Season of the Witch and Halloween 5 is not the best of the series, but at least it has Michael Myers. But uh, Season of the Witch is probably a cooler Halloween film, so, but that's up for debate. Anyway, I digress, as I often want to do. If things go right this weekend, we will not only record a Mutantville Players Club podcast for you to uh, recap the events of 2010, but uh, I'll also um, get that Q&A done and determine the winners of all those cool Fangorias that I still have around because I've been holding on to the ones that I promised to give away for the Q&A such as uh, the uh, Scanners cover um, from Fangoria 10 and of course a copy of Fangoria number 100. So yeah, Streetboat loves you babe. Here we go, here's the next one in the pile. If you're an MVP Mutantville player diehard you will know yours truly Strebo made his first on-screen appearance in Hellraiser 3 as an extra. That's right, when I was a student at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts, studying visual arts, got to be an extra. How cool is that? But anyway, next, ding ding, Tales from the Hood, which is actually a really cool anthology film. I'm not a huge fan of anthology films. You know, I like Creepshow and um, it's the first one and only one that springs in mind apparently. Um, and Tales from the Hood, obviously. Uh, but uh, Tales from the Hood was a lot of fun. Devil looking dude on there. Oh, here we go. Just had another John Carpenter one, even though I'm not a huge, huge fan of the movie. John Carpenter's Village of the Dan, which is an actual remake, which, uh, yeah, he had a little bit better success with his previous remake with The Thing, even though that one was universally panned. It wound up being an all time classic. John Carpenter for the thing that is. So, anytime I can get another John Carpenter thing, if I'm having a thing, a John Carpenter cover, in case I'm up here talking about John Carpenter or remakes or whatever, I can put this baby up here behind me. As you can see, I right now I have the one and only, the infamous Tales from the Crypt episode, All Through the House. I think that's the name of that episode, yeah, with uh, Larry Drake as the Santa killer. Moving on. Speaking of Halloween, so I was talking about Halloween a little earlier. Here is a uh, The Curse of Michael Myers. That's number four, isn't it? No, that's number five. Because The Return of Michael Myers was number four. But anyway, there's another cover for it. That's actually a really cool cover. And in some lights, it almost looks like the Rob Zombie Michael Myers, which I'm sure some people hate that I even mentioned, but hey, I'm a fan of that series as well. Oh, gosh. One of great, Wes Craven's great missteps, Vampire in Brooklyn. I have no idea what went wrong with that movie. It, it was, it tried to be funny. I guess it just didn't know what it wanted to do. It had no real identity. It tried to be funny and it tried to be scary, but it didn't really combine the two in a successful and engaging way. And gosh, just look at that cover. Is that scary? Is that funny? I guess it's funny because it's so bad it's good, that kind of way, but yeah. Anyway, but who am I? Oh, okay, this is cool. This is actually the issue that I really wanted to get this whole this whole little uh, eBay lot for. Even though it's not a great cover, it, it does cover uh, one of my favorite filmmakers and one of my big inspirations and one of the patron saints of Mutantville. Talking about Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez. This is the From Dusk Till Dawn cover. And it's not a very good cover. It's just a vampire chick, obviously, out of all the cool things they could have shown. But... It's not a huge spoiler, um, but it gives me a, another cool Tarantino and Rodriguez in horror. Two of my favorite filmmakers, and Robert Rodriguez, who if I made like a top three list of, of directors that, um, of my favorite horror directors that are not horror directors, so to speak, Robert Rodriguez would be on there, you know, behind uh, Steven Spielberg and uh, David Cronenberg, who doesn't seem to do horror anymore but seems to uh, but there's a rumor about him coming back so there you go oh and uh the guy threw me in an extra issue schwarzenegger terminator 2 i actually think i, I do not have this cinefantastique so that's very cool because i do collect cinefantastique 
I'll probably have some right here on the rack I could pull off and show you if I wanted to, but I won't uh, put you through all that. So this has been my Fangoria unboxing number four. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. It's been an awesome 2010. This is Strebo from MVP. Check me out at MutantVille.com. And I'll see you next time. Plenty more updates. Mutantville Players Club podcast coming towards you. Uh, Tales from Mutantville is almost done. Hopefully it's going to... Scarecrow at Midnight will premiere at the Nevermore Film Fe Festival if it gets accepted. Hope, hope, hope. Fingers crossed. See you next time, guys. Strebo, MutantVille.com. <laughs> Peace. Happy holidays.